scripture we read <clears throat> of the sons of Issachar, the scripture is clear when it says, there were men that had understanding of the times, to know what their nation Israel ought to do. And their brethren were under their command. They were men that had understanding of the times, A, they knew what their nation should do, B, and their brethren were under their command, they were not breaking rank, they were united, C, what of these days and times, where are the sons of Issachar who should have a clear understanding of the days that we are living in to give the nation the word of the Lord? For man, said scripture, shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Good morning, everybody. Let me begin by saying, number one, this is not the year for the passive believer. This is not the year for the passive. Those who are constantly waiting on things to happen to see how it will turn out. But these are the days for the active and aggressive people of God to rise up and to be difference makers in this day and time. We are going to see suicide at an all-time high. We are going to see divorce at an all-time high. We are going to see the voices of fear shouting to the people and a lot of people buying into the spirit of fear but what said scripture god has not given us the spirit of fear and so we need not overreact to their over reporting and sensationalizing of stuff to use the spirit of fear as their method of operating and of control we're going to see unprecedented numbers of people come to salvation through jesus christ as they notice the system that has been set up by man failing and failing miserably. We are going to see a church that no longer waits for people to come in, no longer waits to invite men to come in, but we will see a church that will go ye out into all the world and begin to do what Jesus says. We are going to see revival because the... Uh, the hunger for pe that people have in their hearts cannot be fed by the things that used to feed it before. They are going to need a move of God, and when God moves, nobody is going to be able to control it. No church will be able to say, it's our denomination, we are the ones that are promoting this revival, we are the ones that are making it happen. No man will be able to take credit for it. The next thing I see is that Prayer groups must rise up and pray and decree. They must pray fireborn prayers, prayers from out of their belly, scriptural prayers, powerful prayers, ballistic prayers. Not these, as I would quote often, gentle Jesus, meek and mild prayers. I see supernatural signs and wonders that accompany evangelists and evangelism. They're going to begin to break out spots all over the world of evangelism, but this is a new type of evangelism. It is followed up with corresponding signs and wonders and miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost. God's power will be palpable. God's power will be raw. People will know that this is the Lord's doing. This is not the fake. This is not the sham. This is not the shyster. I see the religious spirit the spirit of Jezebel. I see the spirit of Absalom. Absalom is a man who attacks his father, gets his father's concubine, goes on top of the roof. He's a prince of flattery and perverted praise. He is all showy about his long hair. And the thing that God had blessed him with, his long hair, was uh, lower than the lowest branch because that's how he got caught. He got caught in a low branch. The lowest branch that the tree could produce was higher than Absalom's here. Are you feeling it, brother? These spirits are going to be thoroughly defeated. The spirit of mammon, the greed, the greed for money, for cash, that is so prevalent a lot of times. Out in the world, we expect that, but in the house of God, we got these criminals and con artists that have hijacked churches and they're staying in charge with their, uh, with their greedy hearts and greedy minds. I see that those who have made themselves obstacles to God's agenda, they will be shaken down, 
and taken down. Look, you don't have to be Ray Charles or Stevie Wonder to not notice that everything that can be shaken is being shaken. And that which is left to be shaken shall also be shaken until the only thing that cannot be shaken will be left unshaken. And that thing is the kingdom of God. I'm not talking church now. A lot of churches that we see even to now, they're still surviving. They're in survival mode. But when this shaking is done, a lot of churches, many churches, will never open their doors again, ever. Because they have been weighed in the balances and found wanting. Many preachers will not preach this gospel again. They'll go find some secular job because they were not preachers to begin with. They were just doing it for the moolah, doing it for the mammon, <clears throat> doing it for what they can get out of it. And now there's not much of anything to get out of nothing. And so those greedy dogs, as the scripture describes them, blind dogs, are going to leave and many nice buildings, etc., will be shut down and never opened again. Yes. Let me say to you that prophetic words have assignment, and whatever they are sent to do shall be done. My words shall not return void. They shall accomplish the purpose for which they are sent. What do I see? I'm glad you asked. I see a revival fire that's going to begin to burn. It will create the greatest awakening ever in the history of church and world history. Entire regions, entire continents will be activated with people rising as one man to do the will of God because they will be disappointed with the systems of man. They will know that they are being lied to. They will know that they are being conned. They will know that they are being hoodwinked. They will know that they are being bam bam bamboozled. They will know that they are being lied to. They will know that people are playing games with them and they will get tired of it and begin to call upon God genuinely and see the hand of God come to work. An earth-shaking awakening is coming. Prepare. Revival is coming and it's going to hit like a freight train when it does. And I'm not talking about years and years away. We are going to see the, the, the most unprecedented harvest that we have ever seen in this world. Over one-seventh of the world's population, that's over a billion people, will come to know the King of Glory and the Prince of Life, who is Jesus Christ. We are going to see God in his might and majesty, rising up and doing new things. Yes, God will arise and fight, as it were, for his people. He will do, we will see new harvests. Yes, <clears throat> in areas and places that we never thought the gospel could penetrate, the gospel will be released with penetrating power. Because apostolic rank and anointings will be emerging all across the globe. We will see new harvests. We will see new giftings, new anointings. We will see a new glory surge. The term Ichabod will not be pasted or posted above the door of the church or above the door of ministers and their lives and ministry. We're going to see a new glory surge. The glory of the Lord will surge across the world unstoppably. We're going to see new real churches that will emerge. And some will emerge out of some of the brethren that were tired with the old stuff, but they couldn't do anything about it because the church was hijacked by these hoodlums that had this religious thing. Are you feeling it, brother? There will be no more acting, no play acting. Those who want to serve God will serve Him in spirit and in truth. They will be real. And we are going to see in the house real healing, real worship, real love, real giving. Get yourself right and make preparation. Get rid of the things in your heart and in your life that displease the Lord. You must become a vessel that God can use. And therefore, if any man will sanctify himself, he will become that vessel that is useful in the hands of God. Let me say this to you, and say this very strong. God is drawing the battle lines. Yes. And not only is he drawing the battle lines, but battalions of angelic hosts are ready to come together with men to fulfill God's agenda for this planet. Let me say that again in case you thought you didn't hear me correctly. God is drawing the battle lines. That's my first point. And my second point is battalions of angels are ready to come together with men to fulfill God's agenda. We're going to see a surge of angelic activity. People that will see some of these angelic hosts 
And of course, they will not be believed because of the skeptical culture in which we're in. And if you tell somebody you heard from God, then you're always labeled the greatest false prophet that ever existed on the face of the planet. There is no time to sleep. This is not the time to sleep. Awake! O Zion, awake. Awake and trim your lamps, for the glory of the Lord has come. And he wants his people to rise out of their sleep and out of their slumber. You and I must awake to great kingdom opportunity. You and I must awake to great kingdom advancement that is on the horizon, and yea, it has begun. So get out of your sleep and slumber. Awake, O Zion, awake. There's a song that goes like that. This is no time to sleep. Kingdom opportunity, kingdom advancement on the horizon. The sleepy will not participate. Only those who are awake, alive, and alert. Are you feeling it, brother? This quarantine that we're having now globally, that they say is a, you know, it's a reset for what their plans and their agendas are. It's not going to be a reset. What it's going to be is an upset. Because God's plan and his agenda, he is going to superimpose it on the agendas and plans of man. And what they thought was going to be a reset was going to be heaven's upset because God is going to overthrow the might and wisdom of man. Yes. The remaining believers, the remnant warriors, awake, said the Lord of hosts. Awake to his name. And they must also awaken to his name, Jehovah Gibor. This is not the gentle God saving, healing, blessing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the lion coming out to roar. The days of the lamb and the lamb-like behavior of the church, I'd like to say, are over. These are days for the lion to roar. And may, may the lion of Judah come out roaring in such a way and with such voice that it will shake the stuffings out of those who are playing church. Yes, like Noah of old, we have got to be able to sail above the storm and above the waves. Remember, Noah in his time was a boat builder when there was no rain, when there was no flooding. We have got to learn to behave contrary to the culture and to conduct ourselves according to the word and the will of Almighty God. We are going to look strange. We are going to look funny. But hey, what else is new? The media will get a shaking the likes of which it has not seen. Universities will get a shaking the likes of which it has not seen. And hear the word of the Lord. I have not found the church blameless. I will shake it to the root and will shake it to the foundation. I've seen some behaviors in the last couple of weeks of the church. And I'm embarrassed at the way the church can glibly kind of sweep things under the carpet, sweep it under the rug, call righteousness unrighteousness, call unrighteousness righteousness, lie, cheat, and steal, scandalize and vandalize, and still get a pat on the back from so-called bishops and so-called overseers. There is going to be a shaking in the church again to its very foundation. Don't forget, the Bible says judgment must begin in the house of God. And if it begins at us with the church, where shall the ungodly and sinner appear? If God is judging the hypocrite, then why would he not judge the blatant, outright, confrontational, unapologetic sinner? Oh, we have had our time. And I dare say, our time is up. It's God's time now. There's going to be a great awakening. There's going to be a great harvest of new souls. Your time has come, you the believer, to arise and declare the power of God over all diseases, over all plagues, over all sicknesses, over all maladies. Your greatest days are not behind you, church. Your greatest days are ahead of you, says the Lord God Almighty, Jehovah Gabor, Jehovah Gabor, Jehovah Gabor. Let me say this and say this strong. <clears throat> Something else that I must say strong. Everything and everyone, meaning organizations, denominations, preachers, pastors, bishops, Overseer, Reverend Doctor, Reverend Doctor of the Prelate, Reverend Pope, and all these big, big titles that we just love to have. Everything that hindered revival shall be shaken. There will be very little distractions that will be left when God shakes it. And even those shall be shaken. Thus said the Lord, the church must look to me and to me only. And then not only must the church look to me, the church must manage the time. What, Lord? The church must steward the times. The church must manage the times. Not the politician, not the doctors, not the media. Don't see yourself as non-essential as you and I have been labeled. 
The church, said the Lord, must manage the time. We must release arrows of God's deliverance. We must understand prophetic moments and understand prophetic targets and understand targeted prayers and begin to do likewise. The church, I say again, must release arrows of God's deliverance. Meaning, whatever it is that you want to see, you must begin to declare it. Decree what you want to see in Jesus' name. Decree it prophetically. Decree it apostolically. Decree it with all of your energy and verve and nerve and pizzazz. And don't back down when God is backing you up. Don't back down when God is backing you up. Don't back down, I say, when God is backing you up. I see a level of cowardice in the church that's just shameful. Where men and women of God are scared out of their wits. All I hear them doing now is repeating the words that agree with the second heaven. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Is a very rhema scripture for the times that we are living in. Because we see and hear the church conforming to everything that they hear, they repeat. Like parents, without thinking, without uh, the Rastafarian brother said, they don't suss it out. They don't figure stuff out in the light of scripture. They just repeat, repeat. They just parrot, parrot. They just believe what they hear. They are conforming to the world standards and to the world system. Shoot the arrow of God's deliverance. Because it is a day that we are living in. It will be a day of massive exposure. Nobody is going to be left without being shaken. Now here, let me say this as a repeat. I've repeated myself. I'm repeating now. Divisions of angels are ready for God's greatest campaign. Get in rank. The harvest is now. Let me repeat that. Divisions of angels are ready for God's campaign. God's greatest campaign. Because when it begins, and it will shake the world, everybody and their grandmother will know that the Lord is on the march, and this march will not cease, it will not stop, it will not dissipate, it will not go down, it will not peter out, but it will get stronger and stronger. On one side, we see the hands of God galloping towards destiny, and on the other side, we see the hands of the dark world doing everything in their power to create mayhem and chaos. God's greatest campaign, <clears throat> the trumpet for it is about to sound, get in rank, the harvest is now. Get in rank. The sons of Issachar were men that had understanding of the times to know what their nation ought to do, and their brethren were under them. Everybody was in their rightful place. The sentries were where they were to be. The musicians were where they were to be. The people that bore the barrier, the banner, sorry, were going to were in the place that they were supposed to be. Those who were to give the commands were in the place that they were supposed to be. Those who were to obey their commands. Everybody was in their rightful rank. We have a church that's so full of chaos. Everybody's ranked to general and nobody's ranked to private. And so we've got to get rid of some of these generals because everybody cannot be a general and give the orders. If we are all giving orders, then who is following the orders given? God's greatest campaign is about to break out. Get in rank, A. The harvest is now, B. We cannot lose this harvest. There's too much at stake. And so, the lions of the kingdom must arise and roar. They must arise and decree. They must arise and shine. They must arise, for the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. We have too many believers hiding out, camping out, watching this one go by. This is not one that you ought to watch go by because the satanic agenda is on fast forward. Satan has come down with great wrath because he sees that his time is short and he is trying to even make it even shorter by fast tracking some of his own agenda that should have waited another 10 years. But he is here in 2021 rushing what, should be, what he should have been doing in 2031. And since he is on the move, we can't be the same slow poke Rod Rodriguez that we always were in the time past. It's time to call forth Speedy Gonzalez. Those of you that watch those cartoons, you will know what I'm talking about. Now listen. I am shaking open revival wells, said the Lord. I will open wells of miracles, they shall break forth, says the Lord. I shall open wells of signs and wonders, said the Lord. The gifts of the Holy Spirit shall penetrate the culture said the Spirit of the Lord. A lot of God's activity and movement will be on camera because everybody and their mother is now a paparazzi, for God's sake. I will open wells of miracles. 
Be bold, there should be no panic. Be bold, there should be no fear. My kingdom cannot be shaken, said the Lord. Therefore, shake, shake, shake. Shake that devil off. Yes. And we have got to be able in this day and time to pass on our faith, our tenacity, our belief. We, are, we have got to be able to pass it on to our children. Thus said the Lord, every believer should have a day in the week when they fast and pray. I know this is not going to be good news for a lot of y'all, but I'm saying it loud and strong. Thus said the Lord, every believer without fail should set aside a day to fast and pray. The house of God is being swept clean and it must now be occupied. Places of power in the secular world should not be taken over by Satan's people, but by the people that believe in God. This now, what we are into, is a war for nation. It's not a little soul over here and a little soul over here. We are in a war for nation. The church must rise up and reform the culture and begin to set the tone. There is an awakening happening of the body of Christ to take the kingdoms of this world for the kingdom of God. The scepter of Esther, the scepter of the government of Esther, the scepter of the government of Esther. The church must be a galvanized body to turn goat nations into sheep nations. And I dare say that a lot of nations, wink, wink, are heading in the goat Bite me way. The nations are goat bitten. And unless the church arises and begins to take and begins to awaken and shake things up as we are in the battle of nations, there must be an awakening of the body of Christ to take the kingdoms of this world, to take media, to take the scepter of government, to take the scepter of business, and to begin to march forward to the glory of God. The church must be a galvanized body in order to turn the nation that are goat nations right now into sheep nations. Some people don't even know what I'm talking about. That just goes to show the extent of the inability of the church to be sons of Issachar, to understand the times, to know what time it is for God's sake, and to know what the church, what the nation, what the kingdom of God ought to be doing in this day and time. Are you feeling it, brother? We are in a battle for nation. The corridors of power must be occupied. There are going to be incidents where the Lord will sweep the house and sweep it clean of all the shysters and criminals that are right now running the show all around the world. The swept house must be occupied or else it will be seven times worse when another joker takes the place. There's a song that goes like that. Shooting me is a waste. Another raster or rascal will take my place. We must awaken to territory that we have to take. We must, as a kingdom... Awaken to territories that we have to take. A reformed church can reform the culture. Only a reformed church can reform the culture. And with all of the mess and nonsense and lies and innuendo and criminal behavior that's going on in the church, it is no wonder the world is in the state of decay that it is in because the church has not added much salt nor much light. We have lost our brilliance. We have lost our shine. We have lost our taste. Stop sweeping wickedness under the rug. Glory to God. The church must galvanize government. The church must arise. The lion of Judah must roar. We are going to see many very popular entertainers turn to the Lord. We are going to see Many, many popular athletes turn to the Lord. We are going to see many, many businessmen. And I'm not talking about giving the Lord lip service. I thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people who are genuinely turning to God with all their heart and all their soul. A cry will resound across the globe. We want our Christian values back. A cry will resound across the globe. Hear the word of the Lord. We want our Christian values back. We are tired of what you have been trying. Your experiments are a, a morbid, miserable failure. We want our Christian values back. We should not have given them up in the first place with you and your experimenting with us. We are tired of being your guinea pigs. Let God arise and the enemy be scattered. 
Yes. Yes and yes. A cry will resound from nation to nation. From nation to nation. I'm starting it off. I want my Christian values back. We want our Christian values back. To the glory of God, I scream it out loud. A cry will resound across this globe. Yes. Science and media houses will be unable to deny God's move, God's miracle, and God's healing power. The church of our time is going to make a magnificent difference. May it be so sooner than at once and quicker than immediately. Now here, there's a song that's resounding from some church houses. Thank God my voice is one of them. Are you getting tired to see my face? But you can't get me out of the race in this year COVID time. I'm going to be a voice of God and nobody, no lie, none of that stuff is going to stop a brother. Been here too long and I'm not going away. Yes, song precedes manifestation. So we have got to decree. We have got to give the winds a mighty voice. We have got to let the redeem of the Lord say so. When the earth was void and without form and darkness covered the face of the deep, God said, God's people have got to do some setting. I know there's no such word. Setting, setting, setting. Open your mouth like a trumpet and let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Sound precedes manifestation. And when we give out that song in these dark times, in these trying times, that song will reverberate across the corridors of time and will begin to create a change and a shift. Not the kind of shift they're talking about, but a real good shift to the glory of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, glory. We must decree. What is a decree? As I come to a close. A decree is an authoritative order that is backed by the word of God. It must come to pass since God has ordered it. We have got to begin to decree. What is a decree? I'm glad you asked. A decree is an authoritative order that is supported, held up, backed by the word of God. And therefore it must come to pass. Because God has ordered it. Yeah. When God sends his word, it will not return void. It will accomplish the purpose for which it is sent. So we decree in conclusion. Household salvation. Continent salvation. Household blessing. Heaven's invasion in our home. We decree that hindering powers so far shall go. They shall go. They shall go. All hindering powers shall go, they shall go, they shall go. We destroy them, we defeat them, we uproot them, we smash them, we burn them with wax, we melt them like wax, we, dis we, we pull them down, we pulverize them, we grind them to powder in the name of Jesus Christ. All evil powers that are saturating the atmosphere over nations, we command principalities and powers to come down. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. You sons of Issachar in the nations of the earth, arise, open your mouth like a trumpet and give the winds a mighty voice. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, who he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. May you have a great day. The blessings and favor of the Lord be upon you, upon your children and upon your nation. The boom is out.